Then again, the rogues and thieves came out. Then from the body of Vena, they created two sons. One son was black, and he was ordered that you go to the forest, because they could know that he was exactly son of the father, Nishada. They were sent, he was sent to the forest, and then the king Prithu was born. The king Prithu, he is incarnation of power, incarnation of God. Shaksivesha Avatara, so he proved himself as a great king on this earth. He produced food stuff, food grains profusely. That from the life of King Prithu we can understand. We are discussing that in the fourth canto, the life of Maharaja Prithu, how good government can be maintained. Prithu Maharaj is the ideal king. He produced, he made arrangement. The earth was not producing sufficient food grains, so he attacked the earth that, why you are not producing? The mother earth said that because the people have become demon and they are simply eating, but they are not doing their duty, therefore I have minimized producing grain. This is to be very important that the earth can produce any amount of food grains. There is no question of overpopulation. There is no question of overpopulation because everyone is being fed by the mercy of God. God is giving everyone the food stuff. I have several times explained in this class that nobody has got any food problem. Simply the so-called civilized advanced in science, these people have got problems of food grains. Otherwise, there are millions of elephants, they are eating very nicely. There are ants, there are elephants, there are tigers, there are monkeys, there are trees. So many, 8,400,000 forms of body. How they are eating? Unless they are eating, we kill animals, but the animals do not come to us that we are starving, give us food. Never. By nature, there is arrangement, food stuff. The cows, the other animals, they are eating grass. There is profuse growth of grass, so they are not eating your nice food stuff, sandesha rasagula. You are making sandesha rasagula from the milk which they deliver. They are eating grass and delivering your nice food stuff, milk, and from the milk you can make hundreds and thousands of nice nutritious, full of vitamin food stuff. But no, we are so full that instead of utilizing the milk, we are utilizing the blood. You see? <coughs> These rascals, the scientists, they do not know that milk is nothing but transformation of the blood, that everyone knows, so if you want to, that is nature's way, by God's will, that a cow gives 40 pounds, 50 pounds milk daily, but it does not drink 
although it is her milk, no, it gives you human society. You take, but don't kill me, let me live, I am eating only grass, just see. And the civilized men killing them, killing them, and they want peace, just see the fun. Without touching your foodstuff, the cow is eating the grass which is given by God, immense grass, and they are giving you the finest foodstuff, milk. Just after your birth you have only to drink milk, either mother's milk. Nowadays mothers do not supply milk, that is also to be supplied by the cow. So from the very beginning of my life I am subsisting by the foodstuff given by mother, cow. And when I am grown up I kill, this is my gratitude, just see. And they are called civilized. Less than lowest animal, Naradhama. They are called Naradhama, lowest of the mankind. Those who are killing cows, maintaining slaughterhouse, they are lowest of the mankind. They are not human being, less than animal. They have no gratitude. So the idea is that there is no food problem. As the Mother Earth said the to Kim Brithu that I am restricting, so the more you become sinful, the food supply will be stopped. This is the law of nature. At the end, there will be no food grains at the end of Kali Yuga. That is stated in the Shemad Bhagavatam. There will be no food grain, no fruits, no milk, no sugar. You have to live on flesh and blood. At that time, being hungry, you will kill your own children and eat flesh and blood. That day is waiting. So this is the civilization, most heinous civilization. It can only be saved by spreading this Krishna consciousness movement. Otherwise, there is no way. So sinful civilization. Therefore, our first restriction is no meat eating. It is a most sinful act. Meat eating or intoxication, drinking, gambling and illicit sex. These are the four pillars of sinful life. So unless you stop, you break this, these four pillars, how you can think of God? God is not so cheap. The rascal says, you can do whatever you like. I give you, I push your eyes and you see God. I, you push your nose, you see God. You see? These nonsense things are going on. But God is not so cheap. He is cheap, very cheap. He is very kind. But we want to remain sinful. Therefore, we cannot see God. Arjuna address Krishna. Param dhama param brahma bhavitram paramam bhavan. You are the most pure. So how you can approach God with sinful life? That is not possible. That is simply bogus thing, that you keep your sinful life at the same time you want to see God, you want to talk with God. That is not possible. <coughs> So this point is that if the, if the population of the world becomes sinful, demonic, then nature will not supply you sufficient food, she will diminish. We have got experience. In India we have seen, some years ago, there is overproduction of mango. People, very cheap. 
everyone can purchase, and sometimes there is no supply some year. Similarly, food grains also. Some year there is always supply of food grain, and sometimes there is scanty supply. Now, this supply of food grains, fruits and everything, even milk, in our new Vrindavan, because the cows feel very safe, they give us sufficient milk. That is our experience. So you keep things in order according to the Vedic injunction. You get sufficient food. There is no question of scarcity. But if you become sinful, demons, then the nature's food supply will be ultimately stopped. You can produce your food in the factory. You cannot do that. You can produce motor cars to consume all the petroleum within the earth, and then you become no, no petrol. Then, through all these motor cars, unless you find out some other energy, that you can do, you can make things stop turvy But by your so-called scientific advancement, you cannot increase or, I mean to say, stop non-production. That you cannot. So there was such a time, because Prithu Maharaja's father was a demon, he stopped all religious activities. Therefore, people became demonic, and there was restriction of food supply. Then Prithu Maharaja made arrangement, and there was sufficient food stuff. Since Pritho Maharaja arranged the whole society to be religious, to be God-conscious, everything become beautiful. This can be done even now. If people become Krishna-conscious, the whole world will become beautiful, by Kuntha, without any anxiety. That is possible, because that is nature's law. Just like if you become criminal, the state po police force will always harass you. You cannot get out of it. He'll harass you. But that is expensive job for the government, because it requires extra police, extra management, extra everything. But if the people become honest, God-conscious, so many expenditure will be reduced. And money will be saved for spreading Krishna consciousness or for Krishna's service. Then the whole world will become exactly as it was in the Prithu Maharaja's day. So, Prithu Maharaja was a very nice king. He, he not only helped producing enough foodstuff, but he was examining each man, whether he is employed or not. There was no unemployment in Prithu Maharaja's time. Everyone must have employment, engagement. Nowadays, in spite of so much advancement of science, there are thousands and thousands of unemployed people. They have no sufficient engagement. Of course, in your country, although there is employment, they, uh, they have denied to accept employment. In India, for, em for employment, there is employment bureau by the government. So if you go to any employment bureau, you will find thousands of men are standing in line to get a job. Unemployment. But they, it is the duty of the government to see that nobody is unemployed. Everyone must have some means of earning. That is good government. So Prithu Maharaja did it. The brahmanas, not that a brahmana will be employed as a shudra, no. A brahmana must be employed as a brahmana. A kshatriya must be employed for, for a kshatriya. A vaishya must be employed for a vaishya. And shudra, the, that was the system. The brahmanas are rejected in the present society because they have no more interest in religious activities. They don't care for the shastra, sadhu. No, don't care. They simply sense gratification. Dakshyam kutumbo paranam. At the present moment, people will be satisfied, just like animal. If animal has got sufficient food to fill up the belly and sufficient arrangement for sex, then he is satisfied. He doesn't want anything. So man has become like that. 
If his belly is filled up with some rubbish thing and if he is free to have sex life, then he thinks my life is perfect now and more perfect life. In this age, if one man can maintain his wife and children, he will be considered a great man. Oh, he is so able that he is maintaining his wife and children. Maintaining wife and children even cats and dogs can do. But in this age, if a man can maintain his wife and children, he will be considered as very expert. Because most people will have no wife, no children. This is the age. So more you become sinful, the more you become irresponsible, the more you become godless. These things are awaiting. Thank you very much.
often um, women are blamed for their very open, free behavior, uh, such a heinous culture right now. Uh, somebody is seeing this problem like this, or that the government is bad and cannot solve the problems of culture and econ economy and education, a very weak government. Somebody is saying that the whole world of people is um, uh, horrible, it's like a um, swell, cancer swell, and everything has to be destroyed. So people are blaming somebody and they're trying to solve the problem like this. And this is our uh, heritage to blame somebody and to improve something. This is the serious problem. Uh, the blame is on men. If we are talking about degradation of a society, then the nature of woman is described. It is lower. They are deeper in matter, and it's difficult for them to change some things. They are more sensitive, but it's more difficult for them to change. For them, it's easy to follow some leaders with whom he follow, whom he lo they love. But to change themselves for a woman is much, much more difficult. They are more hungry, they are more envious, they are more lusty. And therefore, Shastra, they don't blame women. It's impossible to, to blame them and to... <coughs> it depends from men. If men are controlling their senses, then women are also controlling their senses. Most conflicts are because of women. Because of women. But men are, are to blame. Men have to control their senses and the, in the sense of his wife. This is, this, this is civilization. It is based on the sense, sense control. Prabhupada is saying here that they don't control their senses, they're hankering for sensual gratification, they lose interest to religion, to morals, to honesty. Their only feelings are talk, is saying what is good and what is bad. If, if somebody is unpleasant, then he's a bad person. Intelligent is very, is very weak. People cannot choose the truth if it is in a bad covering or maybe in some unpleasant cover. They don't like to see to hear the truth, although they understand this is truth, but still they will argue because the feelings are very strong and very influential. This is the society of um, rascals. They're innocent, but in this context we are speaking of, Pro of Prabhupada's speech, he said that this is the civilization of rascals. He didn't deny these things. He said that uh, he said that for improving people, we may follow only Acharya. If we are rascals, we need some example. We need, we need Acharya. This rascal say we would say, who saw God? Where? Who is the purest saint? We didn't see such people. What do you want from us? We are just usual people. We were born here and got some education. We are not to blame. We don't see the example. And this Acharya, he, he has to speak and also to give an example. And Prabhupada had Achar, and therefore he was entitled for Prachar. No one, no one, nobody else can criticize if you are not Acharya. If you cannot give an example of a better behavior, you cannot criticize. Only follow, only hear. Otherwise, you are, this, there will be conflicts. Somebody, everyone is, is right, but everyone are hating each other. If people are all right, they have to love each other. But in Kali Yuga, everyone are 
right, but they are hating each other because they don't control their senses. And here Prabhupada said that nature is very generous and it gives everything to people, but when people become rascal, then nature doesn't give food. But this is the fact. At, at that years we had uh, normal food. We didn't feel the problem. Prabhupada said, Prabhupada predicted how, how, how it would be. We, it, will, it will be scarcity of food and uh, food will be bad, of a bad quality. This is how, this is what is happening right now. And medicines are, are now done, are made of um, aborted children. This is a new product, which is nature. Nature is giving the people's embryo, and they feel it, use it, because there are so many abortions. You just imagine. Yeah, devotee, you 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 have, you feel all right in your environment, and chanting Maha Mantra and eating prasadam, but we won't. If we won't be blind and deaf to these peop things which are Prabhupada is talking, we won't be able to build relationships between each other. We would lose this the value because we have the spirit of Kali Yuga to be in conflict. We we have to also be conscious of of what. In, in, in which world we are living to appreciate what we have and we have we have devotees we may also call them rascals but these are different category of people we have to remember about it this is a different category of people devotees rascals and, and simply rascals are, are quite different things this is these are not, not the same Even if they are committing mistakes, this is not the same. We have to remember the gift uh, of Prabhupada when he is giving us his call. If he is giving us an opportunity to talk about Krishna, to chant together, and also he is speaking, look there, that a ca ca cows are killed, children are killed, and they are eaten. At the same time, we have to understand these things, both of them. It is described in Sri Shapanishad. We have to understand the pros of progress and the pros of degradation. We have to see both. Otherwise, we won't be liberated. We would be conditioned of this life or conflicts inside of this con. The one who won't preach and who won't come to people, he would find faults here because we are born in Kali Yuga. We are not really bad, but Kali Yuga. We have this stamp of Kali Yuga. We were born in this time. Prabhupada is giving us opportunity to be transformed, but not for ourselves, but for preaching for other people, whom he is calling rascals. But he wants to give them example and to give them the new path. That's why he is calling them rascals, to change their ways not just to insult them, but we have the tendency just to insult each other, but not to improve each other. We can't even ourselves stand on the right path. This is the force of Srila Prabhupada. He can criticize because he may show us the right way. If you ask, yes, Prabhupada, the world is really bad, Prabhupada would tell us what to do and it will work. Not like uh, materialists are criticizing everyone, but they don't know what to do. Then you shouldn't speak. Then you sh just at first have to hear before speaking. So devotees, control your tongue. I am I'm talking to, to, to men. Women won't be able to control their tongue if if men won't be controlling controlling their tongues. Even your mind you should control, because women they are feeling their thoughts, even the tendencies. It gives them the right not to control their tongue. 
so we have to be strict to to practice Krishna consciousness. This is the message for the man. Here, Prabhupada was talking about the king Vena, the most fallen rascal, but he was a king anyway. <coughs> he explained why it happened. It was the um, impossible situation, but Brahmanas killed him. And be because he just crossed all boundaries, it's an, it's an exceptional case in Vedic times. He, he, it was a bad family. And Brahmanas killed Vyana. They had to do it. Now, in Kali Yuga, of course, we, have, we need presidents, we need kings and leaders. And we have to accept what we have. In countries and societies, All of them, they have to appoint some presidents. But frankly speaking, we have to we have to say that we don't have such qualities. We are simply have to do it because there is no other choice. Vienna didn't accept that he didn't have but good qualities. He said that uh, he he said that I'm 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 God because it, it's written in Shastras that in the body of King all demigods are living. That's why he was saying that I'm God and you have to worship me. He he took this formula and was forcing people to worship him and all sacrifices to offer him. This is Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, it's typical typical case. Everyone is happening. Everyone who has the power or can do something, he's, he cultivates such moods. This is the food for the false ego. We know this. Our talents, our positions and riches. This is the great food for Ahankara. But we have to know that spiritual knowledge kills this Ahankara. Brahmanas would curse, real Brahmanas would curse. Don't think that there are no real Brahmanas. If they, if they may be not on earth, but they are somewhere else. We have to understand from the Vedic uh, point of view and philosophy that uh, life uh, is not only on earth. Life is everywhere, and powerful creatures are always existing who are higher than us. There are our predecessors who are really worrying about us, about what is happening on earth and with our life. <coughs> so there will be curses if we, if we don't live according to honesty. Of course, we will have curses, and this civilization will be destroyed. There are pandemics and wars and ill sicknesses. And now we are seeing this de decaying of the society. And this is the curse. And where these curses come from? They are coming from above. So if we step on this path of spiritual life, then we should know how to satisfy Brahmanas, how to satisfy Guru people who has this spiritual vision. This is the only thing we should think about. We shouldn't think about satisfying our senses and who is right, who is wrong. We are not ready to judge. We have to understand who am I at first. Devotees are expected to be qualified. We need to have a full qualification. And then we get blessings instead of cursing. This is what is happening. In this corner, many getting blessings from Parampara, and people are getting curses in this society, living without soul. We need blessings. 
and even curses and materialists would help us. We are not waiting anything. We, we are not waiting anything from material world. We just want to satisfy Krishna, Guru, and Brahmanas. And we don't want to play anyone. We are just controlling our senses. This is the sol- This is the solving the problem. Goswami is the position of any devotee. Formally, you shouldn't take sannyas, but in your heart, you must be like that. You must be Goswami. Even women, they become Goswami. There are many examples in history. And also, such women are in a scorn, are very powerful. I know such women, who may take as an example. If Goswami, then it doesn't matter who is he, a man or a woman. He is a Vaishnav, a Vaishnavi. We want to be elevated to such a level of civilized life. And there are higher classes of people who, who are conscious of God, who are know about the soul and re- understand the value of this. I just heard the lecture of Prabhupada and uh, his mood got into my heart. I'm about his um, compassion to cows. How is he saying that cows it's horrible to drink the milk of a mother and then kill this mother. Though this mother doesn't do you any harm, she's just eating the grass. It just impressed me. This is the fact. How this civilization won't be punished? And Prabhupada said that just only preaching Krishna consciousness, this world may save it, uh, itself. This is the fact. No, no, not like Prabhupada is praising his culture. This is the fact. There is no other way. There is no other no knowledge anyway, and there is no such example which is given by Pro, given by Prabhupada. I think that these words of Prabhupada are very powerful. Uh, and influential for the hearts of devotees. And devotees, they start to understand what to do and what not to do. We shouldn't um, invest our energy into conflicts. There is no sound, unfortunately. Problems with the internet. But we we have a sound. There is some problems with the internet on his end. Now he will, he will reconnect. Maybe you now would speak. Maybe you would continue. I may point out somebody. It, it happens sometimes. So, it's a very interesting topic. Shri Prabhupada emphasized in Chitan Chandra Prabhu also. Sh- 
Srila Prabhupada on the basis of this verse is talking about Prithu Maharaja, about his uh, legacy, about his family. Uh, his father, maybe not bi biological father, because Prithu Maharaj is a Shakti Vesha Avatara, he is the Lord himself. There were not uh, such precedents when, when from the body of a father, uh, a child, um, a child was born. He came with his wife Archie. Probably the topic is very important, that's why it's happening. It's happening. Hmm? Something important is happening. I have two questions. May I ask? So, Prithu Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, was talking about the bad government, about sinful government, sinful society, and as a consequence, all these um, curses come, famine, um, dryness, people start to fight with each other because people that stop um, making sacrifices. Krishna is talking about this in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, that uh, he created the earth and then created uh, demigods and living beings, people, and also the rules of this, the interaction, the people and the demigods. And this interaction is called Yagya. And Vienna was <coughs> was uh, the contrary. He was uh, the opposite to Rajarisha. He he has become Mayavada, and he blamed all Brahmanas. In the fourth canto of Shman Bhagavatam, he said that he said that to them that you are like pro prostitutes. I am your master, but you are worshiping somebody else. He cancelled all yagyas, and all problems began. And also, one good side of such kings is that um, uh, a suppressive governing. You know, including thieves and um, criminals. And so Brahmanas, they, uh, they killed him. When he crossed this uh, red line, when he st said that he is God, power and pride, if a person doesn't control his senses, he may quickly be intoxicated from the power and power 
Uh, the culmination he said that he is God. Then Prithu Maharaja was was appeared, and he is example of um, uh, ideal king and real civilization. But there was one problem. There was a dry season, and the land it didn't produce anything. It's quite interesting. Earth is alive. And if people, they stop um, making yagyas, uh, all the piety is disappearing, <coughs> then the earth doesn't produce. The same way as a cow is giving milk out of love. It's a very valuable product, milk, which is um, developing subtle tissues of a brain. And so earth Maybe yesterday I was talking to some devotees and devotee told me that now there are people who are deeply researching Vedic culture and agri Vedic agriculture and the relationship to the earth. This is the fact, at least in Australia and India, people, they are addressing the earth, just the addressing representatives of Vedic civilization very uh, respectively. They respect cows and bulls because they are they're interrelated. And later they take manure and um, cultivate it in some way, process it, and then they give it to the land and later they plow, they grow food. And it is a fact that on that place, when they called cultivated the earth this way, according to all ancient wisdom, uh, the wonderful plants uh, has uh, started to grow. Some new biological species are appearing, uh, very useful. It means that the, there is Earth has everything. It's a very interesting thing. Uh, I, I was promised to give the link how the Earth is reacting. And if we are coming back to Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying Yagya. <coughs> Yagya is, uh, is born out of duties, and Maharaja Prithu was to, took care of duties to, uh, to re rebuild Daivi Varnashrama. This is the duty of a king. And Krishna also said that due to Yagya, Due to rains, everything is growing, and rains are falling because people are making yagyas. Because rains are sent by demigods, by representatives of God, and yagya is born out of prescribed duties. When people are executing their duties, it means yagya. which is born out of prescribed duties. And prescribed duties are described in, in Vedas, and Vedas are coming from um, Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Vedanta Krita is the one who told Vedas. Today's Gita Jayanti, Krishna has told Bhagavad Gita, which is the essence of all Upanishads, Gita Upanishads, and Upanishads, this is the best part of Vedas. And the culmination of all Vedas is Yagya is, should be made for Krishna. Therefore, in the third chapter, Krishna said, <coughs> Uh, 
any activity which is um, made not like yagya, any activity is not which is not for satisfaction of Krishna, has become karma bandhana. But the activity is for absolute truth or is yagya. This activity would would liberate a person. In the same way, Chitanchandra Charam Prabhu noted a very important topic which we can discuss. The men are to blame in all problems, in degradation. I even know who uh, exactly. Women must be protected and the men must be cultivated. All men are to blame, all of them, and all of them who is who are present here. So we have to admit it. Recently we were reading Srila Prabhupada is saying that Vedas are mostly formed for men. He wrote about it. And it's interesting that the conclusion that men have to be cultivated. Vedas are, no, Vedas are knowledge, knowledge which leads to transformation. Uh, women already, they, they have a lot. They don't have to study. But men have to research Vedas starting from um, from Acharya Ashram in the Ashram of spiritual master and to form the qualities to control their sense and to become Gaswami. Therefore, the man, he is, uh, ha, he is the senior, he has this responsibility and he has to be qualified to lead and to take care about the, his juniors. And therefore, in this sense, Vedas are for men. This is the purpose of Srila Prabhupada. You want to read the purport. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can see you and hear you. I already said what I wanted to say. So this mode of Srila Prabhupada, it... Um, arouse a response in my heart. I feel how Prabhupada is preaching from inside. He is compassionate. He's, these energies are very, very powerful. Therefore, it's very good to listen to lectures of Prabhupada and to read his books. We are taking his spiritual energy to preach. Not just knowledge, but also an energy of, of compassion of Prabhupada. I haven't heard uh, so that somebody would uh, talk about cows like that. I read about it, but Prabhupada is speaking uh, with tolerance because still slaughterhouses are not closed. So uh, he has to have a great compassion and tolerance. We have to learn from Prabhupada. We are still reactionists. We are, conf we are fighting often. Prabhupada could speak the truth and also to be tolerant as, a, as an earth and compassionate. This is what I may say now about this lecture. The topic is, um, is wonderful, 
about Maharaja Preet, who about his appearance in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. We have to research it uh, attentively. We have to learn a lot from these examples of great personalities. We won't be able to act uh, how Mahar as Maharaja Preet, who, but we can do it together. If we would act like these great souls, if you would uh, deny personal glory, personal envy, because there are more and more Vaishnavas all over the world, if we would have the united spirit, if we want conflict inside of Iskon, then Iskon would be very powerful because Dava. The quantity is enough. Now we think we should think about quality, about cooperation. Uh, without glory and awards, and then we would be able to to do some something powerful all together. This moment of sankirtana means that we are doing only together. Even the Lord Chaitanya said that I only have two hands. I have a lot of fruits, the fruits of love of God, I then, but I have only two, two hands. Please help me to distribute them. And it's quite difficult for us to do it together and separately it's also difficult. How to live together. And sometimes we think to be or not to be. But our intelligence is saying that it's better to be with devotees than without devotees. Sometimes it's impossible to be with devotees. Uh, we need to practice separately sometimes. Krishna would give us several attempts. No one can do it from the first attempt. We have to do several attempts during many years. After these years, we start to understand that I don't have enough time. I have to be hu hu humble and to become a servant, to become tolerant and compassionate servant. This is what I may add. Thank you. I wanted to remind, as Prabhupada said, that in the end of Kali Yuga, there won't be no foodstuffs, grains, milk, and sugar. Do you remember he, uh, he, he said about it? Uh, it would be quite difficult without sugar. And also we may remember about Yudhishthira. When they got the earth, the land, Duryodhana gave them. This land was not, um, it was a desert maybe in Rajasthan. And in Hishthira, he, he invited Brahmanas. Brahmanas started to make yagyas, and after that, everything was restored. This is the subtle spiritual technology of success. <coughs> what we read in Bhagavad Gita today, when we are making sacrifices, then people, they start to, uh, they started to plow, plow the earth and the rains started and that place has has become like a oasis very soon and the palace it happened uh, such transformation happens even in Kali Yuga it's a good, good times for Krishna consciousness And so, please, who would like to start? Thank you very much. It's a very important topic today. Chitan Chandra Chiram Prabhu, he said about three things that the conflicts in this in the in our society 
people are conflicting often and also in material world and the and the blame is on men before that it was uh, we were speaking about women but actually the men it's very important to control the words and to especially the mind the thoughts and even thoughts if they are not pure then women may react on these thoughts and to behave the same the same way actually I watch uh, quite a heavy degradation when I walk to Sankita and we talk to people it's very difficult to involve them to come into conversation about spiritual topics when you were talking about um, that there are so many devotees but in our region I don't see that there are many devotees <coughs> And I feel really that I have a, we as a man, we have responsibility and it's quite difficult to fight with our laziness. And we see that demonic forces, they are quite organized, they are acting technically, invisibly, how to destroy the society, TV, advertisements and so on. <coughs> they are pushing people to sense gratification and people they don't understand that this is the cause of all problems moreover meat eating in slaughterhouses is quite difficult right now and I'm watching this Shua Prabhupada predicted it at that time he was saying about it and now we're watching this fact we couldn't think 20 and 30 years ago what 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 what, what would happen to people we didn't know how strong will be the degradation I understand that the Lord Chaitanya gave us the mercy and Shri Prabhupada gave us mercy and the, this chanting must continue for thousands of years of course we have we are responsible for preaching but seeing these demonic forces and how they are organized, organized We also have to have some programs, some actions, so that on the basis of Vedic knowledge, we have to implement our principles into society, which are given by, by Srila Prabhupada. And we have to be united, we have to be friends. There must be no envy and conflict in this con. Uh, you said once that Srila Prabhupada gave us everything. We must only think how to help people. So we are, I'm grateful to all devotees now we are meeting more often it helps a lot and thank you Karabajana Prabhu I didn't have it before but now I'm reading often and I got into this atmosphere Everything must become clear, more and more clear. 
I'm really thank you to, to, to everything. And so we would glorify the Lord and remember His words so that our words would stay so that we would remember about it. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Tan Chandra Charam Prabhu, would you like to add something? May other devotees speak. Who would like to speak? Economical problems, karma, famine, future. Gauranga Prabhu, would you speak? Prajamani Prabhu. Hare Krishna, my obeisances. Of course, when we are speaking about bhakti, we can deny other sides, prakriti. If we, we, our society will grow ten times more, then we, what, what, what? Democracy, capitalism, or how we would implement these questions of cooperation. Now we see that many devotees are working and they are dependent on, on materialists in their earning money. And they are dependent not on Kshatriyas, not on the land, but on some strange civilization. And politics is here. And how we would get to Varnashram? This, this um, transformation is quite interesting. How it will look like. And all these questions are very interesting. I don't have much time. Uh, Gauranga Prabhu, are you here? Ananda Vrindavani? She's not here. Mother Javantika. Ishwara Krishna. Would you like to add something? So please. It's very interesting lecture of uh, Srila Prabhupada and Chitan Chandra Chiran Prabhu. He spoke about many aspects uh, our civilization, which we live now. And in spite of our environment, which is un inauspicious, but still 
Srila Prabhupada gave us an opportunity to practice, practice devotional service. And the most important thing is to give these people to, other, to others, to people whom Srila Prabhupada is here calling rascals. But Srila Prabhupada, he can do it because, because we have to preach and we are preaching in this great time. Many devotees are putting efforts which uh, this knowledge of Srila Prabhupada uh, to distribute among people. <coughs> Srila Prabhupada said that uh, as long as we, uh, we distribute his books, he would live uh, eternally. And each of us may, may put some efforts When Hanuman and his um, armor helped uh, help to build the bridge, a small spider also was helping to build the bridge. Hanuman uh, tried to draw drive him away, but uh, Lord Ramachandra stopped him and said that. Um, um, it doesn't matter who is big and who is small. You are making uh, the same service to me. So devotees, they may distribute books in a huge, uh, in huge uh, scale, but somebody may distribute a small book. But both they get the mercy from Srila Prabhupada. I would stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this example of um, spider. If we continue this logic with the spider and Hanuman, just look, Srila Prabhupada, he has done a lot. He brought this uh, wonderful philosophy and Sanatana Dharma to the Western world. And he did it alone, without any support. And at first uh, he was waiting for some support, but he didn't get it. He was just praying. And he created this society. And in the beginning he was uh, everything, later he got some disciples and helpers. Devotees who, who were taking more and more responsibility. And comparing to Srila Prabhupada, uh, we cannot even compare ourselves with him. He is like Hanuman and we are like spiders near from him. But it's interesting, but Krishna equally um, perceives uh, Hanuman and spiders. Brahmachandra said that you are taking uh, huge rocks and spiders taking uh, sand, particles of sand. But Krishna is getting the mood, getting, he is accepting our bhakti. If we understand this culture of bhakti, and if we are helping somebody who is serving Krishna, if we are finding our, the, our place in this Varnashrama, and doing something according to our size, 
Krishna is taking us equally. What Shri Prabhupada did, no one would, uh, could repeat it. But if we sincerely, in our scale, would try to satisfy Krishna, Krishna would take equally our efforts and Srila Prabhupada's efforts. Of course, we cannot comparing us uh, with Srila Prabhupada. But if we are sincerely trying to become his follower and deeply um, studying his books, trying to be his um, humble servant, Chitan Chandra Charam Prabhu was telling today, uh, he was repeating it because he is feeling uh, pain in his heart because of these conflicts, because this material world is full of conflicts. If we are, we have to bring knowledge to people. If we are also fighting, then it won't make Prabhupada happy. So we also want to put effort in this direction. If there will be an auspicious atmosphere, people would be attracted by this atmosphere because uh, there is lack of such atmosphere in this world. So thank you for reminding this example of a spider. Somebody else? We have Avantika, Krishna Nayaka. Who is first? Who is the first? Please accept my obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> Congratulate you with Gita Jayanti. Each devotee must do everything uh, that he can do. To fulfill the instructions of his spiritual master according to his nature. So we just have to preach. How many books you distributed? Y yesterday. We distributed one thousand and five hundred books. With Gorgavinde Prabhu, we distribute in the women's prison. And for the mercy, by the mercy. We have a great team of Matajis in Almata. They are helping. We brought to the. This is the only women's prison in Almata. And we brought uh, their books and prasadam. It was a wonderful process of Sankirtana. We were talking with the director of this prison. About three years ago, I have been there. And this year, I met the substitute of the director of this prison. We were talking to her. Mm. 
this she said that you understand that uh, people are ignorant here but you are not in ignorance so please help us to give this knowledge to workers and to prisoners uh, 400 um, uh, women are there and also 30 children are there so devotees so we, 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 we brought books and they ate at prasadam the people who were working in this prison also were taking prasadam At first, uh, we brought um, I'm I'm called as um, <coughs> so I'm preaching at first like a volunteer and uh, giving them some prasadam and next day with Gorgavinda Prabhu we brought them books people were different after taking prasadam there is a police there it's quite risky And this um, director said that these books are interesting for her. So one, 1,500 books and some hygienic tissues, Mahaprasadam, um, tangerines and bananas. Just every person does what he can do. And maybe Krishna one day would uh, glance at me. You have to do it sincerely. Whatever you can do. I'm not a jnani. I'm not a Brahman, but my spiritual master gave me Krishnaya distribute books all your life. And I'm doing this. On the whole, maybe about 2,000 books have been distributed. And today I want to I want to distribute 108 Gitas. And also we have a congratulations. I want to distribute till the night because I, because I want to dis satisfy the Lord. As Shivarama Swami said that Krishna doesn't need, uh, does is not interested in if you are Brahman or not. He is interested in your everyday surrender. I want to distribute books in the men's prison. I have to find uh, a lot of prasadam and to bring Srila uh, Prabhupada books. Because people in prisons, they are really inclined to read philosophy. And I'm meditating on this. And I'm giving books to uh, in prisons, in um, um, in hospitals, <coughs> and 
Krishna was, I'm, I'm, I'm such a sensitive, and one uh, woman just left her body before me. I said, I told Hare Krishna to her. We just have to do what we can do and do it sincerely and to do something pleasant for Krishna, something beautiful. The most um, important thing is the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wants to save fallen souls. He is embracing such devotees. And there is nothing impossible for Krishna. I've never thought that I may be in a women's prison and that I will be uh, received. For me, this is a victory. Uh, if you are doing something persistently, then you will be victorious. You need to, to like Drua Maharaj, you have to be, um, you have to be tolerant and determined. We just need to pray. I was yesterday walking on the street and I, I've been freezing. And in that moment, And when I was distributing books yesterday on this uh, freezing weather, I'm constantly praying on Sankirtana. I'm constantly in prayer. I'm constantly praying, oh, please, Lord, help me. Please. Uh, help uh, Lord please help me to stop this so and I was uh, sharing with Gaur Govinda Prabhu that Sankirtana is such a unique thing you are always you are always praying if you want it or not and the body is aching We have to try and to to keep our body healthy. And this is the uniqueness of Sankirtana and its attractiveness. And now during the marathon, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot. But Srila Prabhupada is appreciating it. And if uh, each person would do something, somebody is uh, delivering lectures, somebody is organizing, somebody is worshipping deity, somebody is cooking. If each person would uh, do its service, for it, do it for Krishna, then we would be very happy. And everything would fall into this, its place, as it should be.
this is what I can say right now. Thank you, Krishna Nayaka. Stan Chandra Chan Prabhu, would you like to say something? There are questions for Abhishek Prabhu. Maybe we will ask questions. So now let's ask answer questions. First question. Hare Krishna. Please accept my obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Please tell about that we all was born with the stamp on our forehead. What qualification we should get to satisfy Guru? The stamp on a forehead, it means there is a word in some tribes, tabu. It words means magical force. Why? When you say tabu, then people don't ask why. You just ha can can do it, and that's all. In the same way, you may use this taboo in other in, in other meaning. Not uh, you shouldn't do, but I want and I will do it. And Kali Yuga means this taboo, which means that uh, I want I want to do it, and no one will ask why are you wanting it. This is the stamp on our forehead. This is now anomaly. The word tabu means that nobody uh, would ask why is it tabu. And this tradition is destroyed when somebody is saying that I want to do it and I, and I, and I would do it, do it anyway. <coughs> this is the stamp on our forehead. We were born like that. This is Kali Yuga. And what's the way out? This is the secret information. But Prabhupada told to anyone, told to everyone, Chant Hare Krishna. I don't know, I can't say for everyone, but <coughs> certain part of life we are not chanting, we are trying to chant. 
when we would really start to chant it, then we'll be transformed. If we hear a mantra inside of us, it means the transformation. This stamp is, uh, is removed. And we'll be just understanding what's bad and what's good for devotional service. And we will be, will be self, um, self-independent. It will be quite clear in our heart how to live and which words to speak, what shouldn't speak, when to get up, and how to chant our rounds, and how to accept guests. Inside of our heart, will be, it will be clear for us. It, it would mean that we hear mantra. So a certain part of life, we don't hear mantra, we are just chanting and we're trying, and this stamp is removing gradually. And this word, I, I want and I don't want, is the worst obstacle in our life. Another question? My husband uh, violated me and uh, my friend was an um, abuser and he uh, Perverted my uh, my my face, and uh, I feel hatred toward people. He deformed uh, the, fra- the face. And it's natural if you feel hatred toward him. We thank Lord, Lord for everything. We shouldn't uh, communicate with such people. And the question is... How not to lose the faith? Nobody can destroy our faith except of us. Faith is a very internal position. Of course, I didn't expect such, such thing. I'm I'm serving God and somebody, my friend, beaten me. A superficial faith is an expectation of some good results of my process. Faith doesn't expect anything. Faith is a spiritual energy. If we are expecting some, something from Maha Mantra, from Iskon, then our all material expectations will be destroyed. But the faith is, is a different thing. If people are very sinful, then the land won't give food food stuff. What would uh, happen in the golden age, in nearly ten thousand years? 
because there will be both pious and impious people on the earth. Sinful and pious people are will be here, but the culture will be different. For example, in our Krishna consciousness, we also have sinful people and pious people, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> both both of them will know the goal of the life, and they will appreciate sadhus, and they will hear about Kropada's books, and he will take part in this culture, and he will get. He would get some benefit, and both of them have to be liberated from their piety and from their sins, because we are souls. What to do with self-criticism when you are analyzing your own faults, mistakes, and you don't see yourself as a soul. Maybe we shouldn't analyze ourselves. Sometimes, sometimes we shouldn't analyze ourselves. When you build some relationships, some new relationships, you may analyze your character, relying on your experience, and not to make new mistakes. Then you sh then you need an analysis, or if you feel that somebody is worsening in your life, uh, then you read some books and trying to find the internal reason. This is necessary. In other cases, you just um, you shouldn't think always about it. You should think about Krishna always and uh, take part in devotional service. Krishna is rich. Krishna is attractive. Krishna is. Um, Incredible. Think about him more. Thank you. There are no more questions. Sadhu Sangha Prabhu. I wanted to um, ans ask a question. You were saying about cow protection. It was one of the goals of ISKCON to protect cows and to development of agriculture. We got the cow. My perception of this service started to change because I've got some relationship with cows, and you see that cows are not just animals, as we, as we were thinking before. They are also personalities, and Krishna loves uh, cows and protects them. I often see uh, messages against cows, especially from vegans and materialistic people. Devotees sometimes also write about it. And new people, they also say, we don't drink milk because it's harmful for our body. <coughs> and also, vegans are also writing about uh, against cows. And this uh, cow protection um, is also I'm replying these vegans who are against milk. Shri Prabhupada saw this violence against cows. And vegans, they are saying that we shouldn't um, encourage such violence and we shouldn't drink milk. But Srila Prabhupada was seeing this and he recommended to, to drink milk because it is, it's, 
and it's purifying our brain. If the cows are so pitiful, but we offer such milk to the Lord, maybe these cows are serving the Lord and they may be liberated from this from these sufferings and they're getting benefits. <coughs> I'm answering like that. Please uh, prove if it's true or not. How to reply to vegans who are saying that the milk is harmful and that uh, we are taking the milk from the calves. How should we be opposite? Uh, the most important thing is not the milk, but the love of cow to the to the, to people, the relationship <coughs> of cows. She is giving the milk with love to to people. This is what is, this is what is important. In this sense, uh, vegans, they are correct, uh, they are logical when they are saying about violence toward cows. Kavinda uh, Maharaj is also refusing milk because of its, uh, its violence. But still we have farms where cows are grown with love. So you preach what is real milk, what is real cow. You tell how it, how it was in the past that all people had cows as a member of the family, not just like an animal. That was a relationship as, as to the mother. There is seven mothers. We have to rise the prestige of a cow. We have to elevate the position of a cow. We have to worship this nature of the cow. The position of cow must be higher than us. Because this is the very merciful nature comes to us through the cow. That's why we are worshipping cows as mothers. This is our task. If she gives us this milk and we take this milk as, 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 as her mercy, as your love, and this is the greatest benefit of the milk. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we couldn't hear the beginning of your answer, but we understood it. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. We may finish here.
I was listening to Chitan Chandra Charan Prabhu. And I want to tell a short story how important it is to glorify cows. I was distributing books on a market to one person from the village. And he said that I'm listening to Hakimov. So she's telling about a person who, is least, who lives in a remote village and he is telling to everyone in his village uh, that uh, she's listening to lectures of Chitan Chandra Charan Prabhu and uh, telling everyone how bad is it uh, to eat cow's meat. So it's important to tell about benefits of milk and be about the benefits of cow. So she's telling that people, even from remote villages, they are listening to the lectures of um, Alexander Hakim of Alector Sunov, and they are li listening to these lectures, and they understand that uh, they shouldn't eat cows.
А еще одна история. Ой, последняя, ладно, извините, что короче. Распространяю на двух. Вы тоже про Александра Сергеевича. Что? Ну что поделать, что он у нас так Ты же знай-ка. На всякий случай предупреждаю. Да, не, не. Просто, просто ты руками не жестикулируй, потому что ты просто задеваешь какие-то вещи. И вот звук пропадает. Поэтому руки держи за спиной. And once I met a woman who was half blind, and I, and I got, um, and I offered her books, and I said that this knowledge is very precious, and these uh, books are elevating. And she said that um, we are spiritually progressing, listening to lectures of Chitan uh, Chandra Charan Prabhu. And I asked her how you found it. And she said that once I felt so, so bad. And we found his lectures in YouTube. And his voice just... Uh, he's such a velvet voice, he's such a spiritual personality. When, when I hear his lectures, my heart is, is uh, reviving. Uh, and I'm starting to cry and to dance and to laugh. And I don't know how it happened. And I want to follow him. Uh, so thank you. It's enough for me because I cannot read. But I can listen to his lectures, and I become closer to God. And I was so much influenced by your words. But I told you. If you, he, he, Alexander Hakimov, he would be very happy if you take these books because his lectures are based on these books. And this woman said that if this would gladden him, I would take these books. So we can do whatever we can. And I, uh, also when I was um, talking to this old woman from the village, I, I, I showed her the picture of my Guru Maharaj Gopal Krishna Gosvami, and she kissed this, uh, kissed this uh, image. Guru Maharaj, could you tell about the qualification for satisfying Guru?
да, да. We have to become pure devoted to satisfy Guru. Then he would be finally satisfied. Still, there is a sequence of these relationships. The beginning is the disciple is asking questions. And since the questions are satisfying Guru, because sincere questions, they mean <coughs> after sincere questions, the Guru pours mercy on the disciple, and he would be satisfied with our process. So we have to become pure devotees, and then the process, process would be finalized. <coughs> Thank you for interesting stories uh, to Krishna Naika. This is a, some something fantastic. I'm happy to hear it, and I'm congratulating to everyone with Gita um, Jayanti uh, Day today. Also, thank you about uh, questions about cows. It's very pleasant to hear it. Thank you, Girit Hari Prabhu, about your compassion. He is such a subtle uh, heart and subtle intelligence. And it was very pleasant to be in the society of devotees, so we had to finish it somewhere. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harabajana Prabhu. Thank you for organizing such programs during pandemia. This is a salvation for us. Thank you for engaging us in pure, in pure devotional service. We are serving Srimad Bhagavatam, and you are an initiator and founder of Charya in this Asia region. Thank you very much. Okay, so we sh we should we should stop here. Thank you very much. Jai. I also wanted to add, I am admiring Mataji Krishna Naiki. She is distributing so many books. And unfortunately, so many people are in the prison. Here in Tashkent, when we were preaching and distributing books, people mostly, they are listening to Chitan Chandra Chiran Prabhu. They are saying that we listen to Alexander Hakimov, Alexander Sunov. Somebody is listening to Kadetsky. I just wanted to say that what Krishnaeka said, even, even remote villages, they listen to these lectures. And here in Uzbekistan, people also interested in philosophy. The problem is that new generation uh, doesn't know Russian language, but old people, uh, they, they are really interested in listening to Alexander Hakimov's lectures. Thanks to his preaching, people are really um, influenced by Vedic knowledge and the books of Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna.
Thank you, Karabadji, not Rabu. Hare Krishna. Chai. Chai.